OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, I know it's been a long day. You have been completely overloaded with information, I bet. Um, so we are going to keep this presentation pretty short and sweet. Um, again, my name is Dr. Carmen Martinez Calderon. Um, my colleague, Abby, I'm not sure she's here. Um, I don't believe I'm here. So. Oh, you are. Yay. Good afternoon, Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Great. OK, and so Abby, I'll let you introduce yourself and then we'll go ahead and get started. Sure. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to say save the best for last. <laughs> this is going to be a very short presentation. Um, my name is Abby Medina Lewis, and I'm a consultant uh, with California Department of Ed. And um, while I have Contra Costa and um, Solano and uh, Merced areas, I also have um, the state agencies that are funded for Section 225, which is Corrections, Education, and Other Institutionalized Individuals. And so um, we're happy to have you here, and I will turn it over to Carmen. Thank you, Abby. So yeah, um, likewise as Abby, I also have um, professional institutions under my belt. Um, as a matter of fact, I um, I oversee um, the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, CDCRs. We owe a Title II funding. Um, and obviously, there are 35, well, soon to be 32 state prisons. Um, and within that, also Orange County and a couple other counties here in the Bay Area, but we won't go into that right now. And we'll go ahead and um, jump on to the next slide. So there we go. Okay, so you may be asking, what is a correctional institution? All right, and so pretty much is any agency authorized under Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, so Section 225, as we've mentioned, of the Adult Education and Family Literacy Act. So these include jails or prisons, as I just mentioned. Um, it also includes work farms, detention centers, halfway houses, um, community-based rehabilitation centers or any other similar institution designed for the confinement or rehabilitation of criminal offenders. Okay, so as you can see, it's a pretty extensive list um, that are eligible for this kind of funding. Um, and we do have a variety um, of, of these institutions currently servicing um, this population throughout the state, um, including, as I mentioned prior um, or previously, uh, the, the uh, state prisons. So furthermore, um, as Abby mentioned, there are adults with disabilities. Um, and so um, Abby does take care um, and oversee the Department of Developmental Services. And within that, the two development centers um, that are located in Porterville and Canyon Springs and the Department of State Hospitals. So the four state hospitals, which include Atescadero, Metropolitan, Napa, and Patton. So again, here you can see a variety of different state institutions that also receive, um, you, you know, we owe a Title II, um, 225 funding. So um, with that said, as we, as Abby mentioned, um, and as we promised, this is an extremely short presentation. And pretty much what we like to say is just present sort of what kind of agencies are under Section 225. Um, and um, pretty much field any questions. Um, what I will say is that all of these agencies also have to follow the same guidelines that are provided to any other agency receiving our funding. Um, there are a couple of exceptions with regards to the deliverables that they are required to submit to us. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much the same guidelines. So with that, I will pause and say that's really the, the last slide, second and last slide, and we will open it up for questions from anybody that may have one. So, questions? So while we're waiting sweet. for people to post their questions, um, I also want to add, um, Rhonda had um, indicated in the chat that if you're not sure if you're receiving Section 225 funding, um, you don't have to do it right now, but um, at the end uh, of this presentation, you might want to get a hold of your grant award notification, and that's how you can you know, find out if you are funded for Section 225.
Yeah, or you uh, may I have don't heard know if of it. info overload, but there's no uh, questions so far. <laughs> oh, there you go, Juliana. Oh, wait, we do have a okay. raised hand. Uh, Thank you oh, for sure. that. Go, go ahead. So I would like to know how do you braid or sub or complement uh, 225 with cake? Fun. Your braid or complement. Um, so in this case, um, again, the the fact that you have other state funding or or even private funding doesn't change the status of our kind of funding, which is supplemental in nature. Um, so always think of your core funding as whatever other funding you may have existing, including CAPE. And this is sort of that cherry on top. So even within 225, as I, I mentioned earlier, it doesn't really change anything or any other criteria that is different from the rest of the eight or 231, other than some of the deliverables that are um, that we cannot collect just based on, you know, the fact that they're confined individuals and uh, privacy um, issues that may arise from collecting certain information that we're not allowed. But other than that, it's the same, same guidelines. It's still supplemental in nature. Um, and so it can be utilized in the same manner. Did that answer your question? It did. Uh, thank you, Carmen. But uh, not bad. And it's getting harder and harder to meet the pre and the post testing um, for the causes. And uh, that is a fact, and maybe others are seeing that too. Yeah. Are you specifically referring to like um, jails or what yes, kind of institutions? Jails, okay. Jails, jails, yeah. Jails. Is it because of custody um, issues? Uh, yes, correct. Or, okay. Mm -hmm. I know COVID sort of threw, you know, kind of everybody for a loop, um, just given the whole, you know, guidelines in terms of distancing and so forth. Um, and, and it is challenging. I mean, having um, worked in a jail before as an officer myself, I know it can be very challenging to work with, you know, um, individuals providing services such as educational services, while at the same time also following other mandates that are, you know, that come down from the state level as well with regards to security and health. So um, I hear you. I know there's different, I know at least within the CDCR, they're really relying and working quite a bit on um, implementing a lot of technology um, pieces that really um, help with that aspect. So I know there's different companies that provide sort of like a closed circuit internet where individuals obviously can't, you know, sit there and Google everything and anything in the world, like if you were out here, but it does have like a closed circuit um, system to where they're able to utilize it for educational purposes. So you may want to look into that. Thank you. Great question though. Other questions? Um, Carmen, there's a, a question. It was in the chat, so it's, uh, I just happened to be on there. So um, it was from Peggy asking if the DSH Colinga receiving money this funding cycle. Peggy, as far as I recall, in the application, they only identified in the request for application, they only identified a Tuscadero Metropolitan Napa in Patton. But don't quote me 100% on that. I would need to double check. Um, but as far as I know, at this moment, those are the four sites that were identified in the application. But I will double check on that. And, and we do have a, a question. And is it possible to teach them virtually and do not disclose our physical location and address to them? That's a great question. A again, it really, you know, I almost feel like that's really a local um, question because it'll really depend on your agency. Um, in terms of like the the security, the FERPA and all those, you know, guidelines that you have to follow as individual agencies. And the reason I'm saying that is I do know that there are different guidelines that certain agencies decide to adopt uh, that may be more um, than what's sort of the minimal requirements. Um, by by either policy or law. So um, again, I would check with your local agency um, and just see what their um, security you know guidelines um, and and privacy guidelines are. So did that answer the question? Go ahead and feel free to unmute. 
Oh yeah, hello, uh, Dr. Carmen. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. I just was wondering how we can find a local agency. We are in Sacramento, so I know uh, uh, like Folsom Prison, um, but I don't know whether we have to reach them or same as the other uh, section that we were talking, they may reach us for something like MOU or we have to just go to them. So I think you're referring to inmates um, and you wanting to share their physical, your physical location for them yeah, to seek I was your services? Thinking, yeah, I was thinking uh, to teach prisoner. I never have experienced those, but I was thinking because of the security, I know we have to follow the guideline that they have, but for the security of our staff and uh, our personnel, I was thinking uh, how we can reach them. The only prison that they know is like, for some prison, do they have any office that we can communicate and you know about them to inform me about their uh, contact person? Or? Yeah, so um, again, you, because you're working with a local prison, you would definitely need to follow their guidelines and their, um, their policies. Um, it, it's sort of a bit of a different setting, right? Um, than say like your local county jail. Um, yeah just because of the security levels, right? And yeah. so that would be one. But what I do know is that also prisons do connect students with local agencies prior to their release. So mm -hmm. if an individual is wanting, for example, if they're halfway through obtaining their high school diploma, and mm -hmm. you know they still have some credits remaining to be able to complete that diploma, that prison will typically um, provide a list of services of agencies um, or, or providers that the individual can um, can seek or go to in order to finish that uh, high school diploma. So it's more again, I would definitely um, check with the with the prison that you're working with um, and see what their guidelines are because uh, again, for security purposes, you definitely need to follow those. Um, there are different. Um, categories or classifications of individuals. And I know that some classifications may have access to a little more information than others. So you really need to be careful on that piece. Uh, but like I said, uh, individuals that are really uh, ready to be released will get that information and they will know where to find you if need be. Okay, thank you very much. You bet. Other questions? Um, I, none are appearing, so. Maybe we'll just give folks a few more seconds if somebody has a last minute one, but uh, nothing is cropping up. Right. I just have one more question, if you don't mind. Uh, so uh, I know uh, when we wrote the grant, we were not aware of the, the agency that we have to reach out, like uh, local uh, uh, county jails. So uh, now I'm wondering, I'm wondering if uh, just what came to my mind. Is there any way to request to move some funding that they approve us from one section to other section? Good question. So I think I understood your question. Can you move funding from one section to the other? So for example, can you move uh, funding from section 231 to 225 and vice versa? And the yes. answer is no. Yeah, no. the answer is no. They're two different. I mean, think of it like it's two different buckets under the same umbrella. So um it's it's for the same purpose, but it comes from different buckets. So you you cannot transfer um, funding from those two different buckets. Okay, uh, that is that, uh, which means that if we don't use that part of the funding, we will lose it. Well, you don't. It, it's not that you lose it. It comes back to the state, whether it's two thirty one oh, yeah, yeah, or two twenty five. Yeah, it will come back to the state, and then it gets yes. you know um, redistributed as yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Peggy, I want to add. I I did um get a chance to double check on the application, and you are correct. Kualinga is in that application, so they are included. So thank you for. Um, for correcting that. Appreciate it. If you're still here. And we do have, I think this is maybe more of a comment, but it's it's in the Q&A. Um, this is from Janice. It says, Placer School for Adults had a program where we helped to expunge records of first-time offenders by coordinating with the parole officer 
and Placer County Health Services. We offered resume assistance, workforce readiness, dress for success, and emotional healing and parenting classes. Right. Sounds like a very holistic program. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions or comments? Janice just said thank you. Right. So. right. I, I think that might be it. Last call. Going once and going twice, right? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I will hand it over back to Jim. Um, thank you, Abby, uh, my, my fellow colleague, for presenting. Um, I don't know if you have any last thoughts that you want to share with everybody present. Um, so, okay. If not, I will say, again, thank you for, for staying for this presentation.